Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars, and here we are again, episode 3 of The X-Files, season 11, and this one is called Plus One. Now, I think it's reasonable to say that it's had a fairly rocky start this season. Uh, the first episode, the more I analyse and think about it, I didn't like the opening episode. The second one was a slight improvement, but I think um, it has some way to go. And I think again what we get here is another slight improvement on what we've got before. And this is more of one of those standalone episodes. It's one of those investigations. They are now fully back with the X-Files investigating. And they are investigating in this episode a case where um, people are reporting that basically they're doppelgangers. They're um, twins. Evil twins are turning up and killing them. And there is one instance where this guy in a bar, his doppelganger crashes his car and he survives and he's interviewed by Mulder and Scully. Scully doesn't believe a minute of it. Uh, he's basically saying that his doppelganger swerved him off the road, tried to kill him. And all this leads them to this woman who is in a mental hospital, has obviously got mental health issues. Um, and all she does all day is like play hangman psychically with her brother. Who turns out to be an orderly um, something like that at the prison the local prison um, and they're playing this psychic hangman game together and it turns out that there is a connection between the game that they're playing and the people who are being killed by their doppelgangers even though the episode doesn't really make it clear um, and Mulder and Scully have to investigate figure out what's going on and ultimately as you would expect become targets themselves um, and that's the upshot of this episode here. I, again, it was nice. There was no baggage of this conspiracy stuff going on. It was just a, a, a plain investigation. Um, and it was nice to see Mulder and Scully doing what they do best. Chemistry is great there between them. It addresses um, them getting old a little bit in this episode. Certainly from Scully's perspective. She questions her age and stuff with Mulder. And there's a couple of nice sweet scenes between them. Um, so that is nice. Uh, I think the only thing that really bothered me about this episode is the fact that Scully, after everything she's seen over all these years in the X-Files, still behaves like she doesn't believe and she still questions everything with Mulder. Um, and she's seen far weirder stuff than what's happened in this happens in this episode over the years. And she still is the voice of reason, the voice of science, and it kind of doesn't fit anymore. It doesn't suit, I don't think, um, that dynamic. And even there was a little bit in this episode that, you know, sexual uh, tension between them. And just like, oh, come on, they're a couple now. You don't have to play with that anymore. I'd actually like to see them behaving like a couple now rather than that. Sh are they a couple, aren't they a couple sort of thing? Which they hint at in this episode. And then they don't hint. It, it, it can't, that kind of didn't work for me. Um, but yeah, it was okay, it was okay in this episode. The classic Mulder humour is, which we saw a little bit of in the last episode, is again expanded on here. I think they needed to inject a bit more life into Scully in this episode. She was a bit downbeat and depressed, I suppose. Um, like I say, she was questioning her age and her relationship to Mulder and all this kind of stuff a lot in this episode. But yeah, it's again, it's on an upward curve. So I'm hoping that throughout, I think we've got seven episodes left now, that it continues on this upward curve, these episodes. And this is a perfectly acceptable X Files episode. Um, and this is one that you would enjoy and accept if you're an X Files fan. Nothing wrong with it. Yes, I still think they can still do better. But it was, um, in a lot of ways, a fun episode, and I think one you will enjoy if you're a fan of the show.